Welcome to Theo Trade. This is Don Kaufman, April 22nd, 2020. About 15 minutes left inside of this Wednesday's trading session. The S&P futures up some 65 handles. Well, what I really think we're seeing inside of today's marketplace is just moving from one gravity point effectively to the next. This is actually a channel that we've been in now for quite some time. Uh, more appropriately than possibly looking at this on an intraday chart, I'm actually going to snap the chart to a 30-day, one-hour. Again, this is a 30-day, one-hour chart. And the reason I'm doing that is not to just emphasize some of the gravity points over here, but uh, to kind of remind you specifically, we've been pretty much in this range since right about here. And that's April, uh, April 8th. And here we are again, um, you know, multiple weeks later, all we're doing right now is just pinging Again, back and forth between these gravity points. The lower gravity point happens to be none other than 27.31, the upper gravity point, 28.11. And we're just shy of that 28.11 gravity point right now. So why I actually bring this up, and I'm going to go ahead for just a second, kind of zoom in over here. I bring it up because when we're pinging back and forth between gravity points, when you start to allocate capital, okay, for the most part, a lot of the capital that you may have allocated, it has nothing to do with the, you know, allocating specifically to the S&Ps, but you might be allocating to, to, you know, the energy sector, you're allocating over to Apple, you're allocating to, to Microsoft, but there's an incredibly, just incredibly high, okay, correlation property to this marketplace right now. So if I cruise over here to the, uh, to the market watch and I look at visualize, you can see the S&P 100 on a day-to-day -day basis, almost all the stocks okay, are moving with the broader marketplace. So I go back over here to the chart. And the reason for me bringing this up is that if you allocated capital, again, you know, in the last few weeks, okay, you're allocating and continue to allocate and pack more and more risk, okay, inside of a very, very tight area. And that area right now is well, none other than 2731 up to the uh, roughly 2011. I mean, obviously, you may have gotten some trades on here. Maybe you got a couple of positions on, you know, prior to that. But again, this, what you're doing right now is just amplifying and amplifying risk by continuing to allocate. So until we actually crack outside of this range, I'm in a bit of an allocation stall. And that's actually an okay thing. Effectively, what it means is I don't want to ante up any more Okay, until we actually break the range. When I say break the range, listen, we gotta we gotta tear to the upside. If we're gonna get to uh, you know 2,900, let's get it done. If we're gonna see some sell side activity, let's do it because we are ready to continue to allocate. Again, it's imperative that we understand, all right, from allocation perspective, that if you trade pretty much in the exact same deviation day in and day out, okay, you're just again you're stacking more risk into the exact same area, regardless of what you might think about, you know, your Microsoft or your Apple or, or any of the products that you trade, what you think doesn't matter. What do you know? You know, okay, that we're seeing high degrees of correlation. What that means is when these S&Ps move up or down, so goes the entire marketplace. All right, the next thing, before I talk a little bit about some of the earnings trades, because I am gonna detail earnings trades. As I said a moment ago, you know, I'm sitting here and I'm waiting for uh, for the cash close to come and uh, I'm just sitting here waiting to check the box, okay? And by check the box, I mean, let's get it done. Let's hit the 2811, okay? Be done with it. And at that point, then we can continue to uh, continue to move. But I've been saying this now literally for weeks, we're just pinging back and forth between gravity points. Obviously, the market uh, recouping most of the losses, though, that it incurred yesterday. All right. Next point I want to make on the S&P futures. This one's kind of a standout, okay, in the S&P futures. And uh, you know what? I'll, I'll start over here on the chart. But um, in the S&P futures, very specifically today, take a look at today's move. There's absolutely unequivocally no volume whatsoever. So when you're looking at the move, uh, yeah, it's a real move. But I'm starting to take things with a little bit of a grain of salt when we're just pinging back and forth between levels. And this is actually, this is the lowest volume that we're going to see today since the entire Corona crisis began, all right? I'm gonna say that again, it's the lowest volume we've seen in the S&Ps since this entire crisis kind of unfolded. And it's the lowest volume by far 
There's just not a lot of oomph behind some of the trade. I think people might be a little exhausted from watching oil in the last couple of days, okay? Which brings actually a uh, another point, okay? So we talked a little bit about gravity points. We talked about pinging back and forth between those gravity points and being a bit more constrained in your allocation. Obviously, we've got some low volume. The next thing I wanna cover, because I've just had uh, literally dozens of emails about this, and it has to do with oil and the contango inside of oil. If you're unfamiliar with the term contango, it's the differential, for instance, from the June to like July contract. The reason I just wanted to briefly mention the contango, okay? First of all, there's some of the largest contangos ever recorded. It is the largest contango really in the last 24 to 48 hours of trade. The largest contangos ever recorded in the history of this business. So you're like, all right, what's that contango? Again, it's the difference between the June, July, like August contract. And if you look between June and July, you're like, oh, what is that? Yeah, it's between what? Six, seven dollars, right? We're talking huge levels. And by the way, this contango has been changing throughout the course of the day. Check out what it's actually doing. Okay, so oil happens to be up and we'll just look at the front month oil here and front month contract oil, right? That's your active contracts, your June oil's up 20%. And yet if you take a look at USO, USO is actually down, okay, by what, 10 or 11%. Why? Because the contango is eating it apart. Now, the reason I'm mentioning oil, okay, it's not going to be so much about oil tomorrow, right here, live at Theotrade. For the clientele of Theotrade, we are going to be hosting okay, a crash course in extreme volatility. When I say that, okay, this is a class expressly on trading some of the volatility products. One of the things that very few people recognize about trading volatility, whether you trade the VXX or the UVXY or the SVXY, you know, it doesn't matter which products you're trading. You're going to have to understand a little bit about contango and a little bit about what's termed backwardation, because one of the things that I see unfolding and one of the reasons that we're hosting kind of this this crash course on volatility and volatility trading is simply yeah, some of the exact same okay, contango and backwardation exist inside of the volatility futures. And these volatility futures, well, guess what, okay? This is how you construct a product like the VXX. It's how you construct a product, okay, like UVXY. It's how you construct XVXY. All of your volatility products, okay, are really created from the volatility futures. And the fact that those volatility futures right now are in backwardation, okay, should, give you a little bit of fear, okay? Most of the time they actually trade also inside of a contango. Nevertheless, there's quite a differential in those volatility products and that's gonna be explored much more deeply because the impact, okay, of the contango or of the backwardation, it matters to the VXX, it matters to the SVXY and you're gonna find out how the SVXY or the VXX, how that can very easily turn into the USO, which is again, a complete break from the norm. All right, moving onward and upward. So we looked a little bit about oil contango. We talked a little bit about volatility, some of the gravity points out there. Last, but definitely not least, let's hit upon earnings. Now at Theotrade, I personally haven't talked a tremendous amount about earnings. It's because I see some issues, okay, with trading in and around earnings. You know, and the bigger question over here, you know, always, Okay, you know, are these earnings trades, are they going to be worth it? This quarter, okay, I am finding it extraordinarily difficult to get a handle on earnings and even more difficult to try to see degrees of profitability from the earnings. And I'm going to point this out specifically inside of Netflix. There's lots of earnings coming after the bell, neither here nor there. And by, by the way, I could pull up a scan for this. This is just really some of the earnings coming like literally what today, tomorrow. Right? There's a lot on the plate in terms of earnings even more next week. And I'm telling you right now, okay, let me show you precisely what's bothersome. If I cruise over to the Analyze tab here on Thinkorswim, okay, on the Analyze tab, I have tendency before earnings to kind of key into something called expected move. The expected move is trading right around 50 bucks. Okay, what that really means, all right, for the most part, kind of what it means is the at the money straddle, the at the money straddle, 
inside of Netflix is trading right in and around the $50 level. Now, some people choose to buy options and some people choose to sell options into earnings. But with all the extraordinary volatility that you see, okay, prior to some of the earnings, and again, what you're looking at right now is the Thinkorswim Analyze tab. And I'm on Think Back and I'm actually looking at yesterday end of day data and I'm doing that just to make a very brief point with this if you take a look at the implied volatility the implied volatility is almost hundred and sixty percent okay you're like great the volatility is sky high I'm gonna go out there and I'm gonna sell that yeah well the only issue okay with selling some of that implied volatility and I gotta reiterate this again and again the issue with it the volatility is not crushing down nearly what you would have anticipated because the volatility of the overall marketplace is rather elevated it's keeping even after the earnings period it's actually keeping the volatility relatively elevated so i'll give you an example okay and the example is yesterday as i showed you a moment ago there in the analyze tab yesterday you could have actually sold the straddle okay for just over a 50 dollar okay credit you could have taken in a $50 credit yesterday in selling, okay, for the most part, the at the money straddle. Netflix, did it move 50 bucks? Not even close. Things moved what? Eh, 10, $12, okay? And right now, right now, if you wanted to go out and you wanted to buy back that same straddle, okay, what would it cost you to buy it back? So I priced it for you. So yesterday, if I were to actually sell the straddle, okay, yesterday the stock was trading at 433. Okay, I'm looking at the 435 straddle. It's trading basically for 5080. Now again, that's the 435 straddle trading for 5080. If I uh, if I cruise right over here, okay, and I were to buy back right now the 435 straddle, okay, all right, there it is. It's trading for 21 dollars. And you think about that, you're like, yeah, 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 you made money, you made money because you collected 50 bucks and you were able to buy that thing back for what? For 21 dollars. Look at that, Don. It was like a $30 profit. We only had like a $10 or $12 move, which is negligible. In most earnings periods, if you had played around with the same idea, okay, you wouldn't have made a measly 30 bucks. You'd have made like, you know, 40 plus dollars. Again, the volatility, it just isn't backing off that much because the overall market correlation is high, okay, which, okay, is saying that the risk is also high on a relative you know, perspective. And I'm warning you around this because if you're looking at the high volatilities before earnings and you're getting excited about them, you have to kind of think again, again, this particular earnings season. Yeah, sure. I'm taking a couple of positions. I'm getting a little bearish, a little bullish around some earnings announcements, but it's a total free for all. Okay. Don't trust the volatilities you see. And definitely don't get like lured into the fact that you're selling high implied volatility, you're buying low implied volatility. Because right now, even if this is high implied volatility, you don't get to keep the premium. You don't get to keep the premium until that volatility gets completely crushed out. And unfortunately, it's just not doing so. So as we come to the bell, a lot more earnings, again, a lot more earnings due out. There's the closing bell. A lot more earnings due out here in uh, again the next 24 to 48 hours but with that we're going to watch very very carefully okay we're going to see if there is an edge that we can hop on s and actually backed off here with the uh, literally seconds to go to the close a little bit of sell side activity into the cash close nevertheless okay we came what within just a point or two of actually tagging the uh, the 2811 the s and is kind of backing off all right one last look i want to leave you with here Okay, on this Wednesday, and that's this. Okay, on the week in terms of expected move, expected move in the SPX, we actually cracked outside of it on Tuesday, came in back inside of it on Wednesday. Nevertheless, okay, huge movement still possible, still plausible on Thursday and Friday, okay, of trade this week. Do not forget, of course, initial jobless claims coming out on Thursday. For those of you, of course, also that are clientele here at Theo Trade, get ready. Class tomorrow kicks off at 7 a.m. Pacific time. It's going to run about two hours. It's our crash course in volatility. Have a wonderful evening, everybody. Bye-bye.